Welcome to my channel. I'll be talking about the relevance on the, of the anointing uh, with respect to the prophetic. And uh, before I go deep into it, I'd like to say, if you're new here, consider subscribing to my channel. Hit the notification bell so that you'll miss out of other powerful videos coming up here. Like, comment, and share this video to bless others. Let's talk about the anointing right away. On the issues surrounding the prophetic call and the concern of being prophetically accurate all the time as well as the involvement with what is generally termed as forensic prophecy uh, which by the grace of god i'm privileged to uh, lead a course in terms of coaching prophets into achieving prophetic accuracy frequently all the time so to say there is a connection between the anointing God gives or renders accessible to the prophetic folks and the practicing in the prophetic faculty. Just as I've endeavored to mention on various or several occasions that there is a connection between the faculty of the miraculous and the prophetic. Anointing is one of those things that serves like a connecting rod or a fulcrum uh, between your success with the prophetic faculty and the faculty of miracles. There are occasions where our folks feel that when we talk about the anointing, this is basically uh, relevant as it concerns uh, the operation or demonstration of the power of God in terms of commanding signs and wonders. But I want to emphatically establish here the concern of the engagement of the anointing in prophesying. And I've always endeavored to say, like I want to say here, that the anointing required for performing miracles is not different from the anointing required for doing the prophetic. The only thing is, what you gym is what you get. What you exercise the anointing for or with respect to is what you get from the anointing as a prophetic person. The first thing is that you are called into the prophetic or you have that kind of sense of mission with respect to the prophetic and you want to prophesy and you are perhaps doing it already. Now, you want to go deeper into the prophetic and uh, beyond this, you want to be able to be accurate all the time when you prophesy. Not only that, you want to as well be able to prophesy with results accompanying your prophecy. By the grace of God, I've been privileged to witness results, that's scores and scores of results following the prophetic as I minister prophetically to lives. And uh, especially in the recent times, uh, this baffles me. Some of the prophecies I'll give and I'll say in two weeks' time this will happen. Less than two days, the miracle have already taken place in full. And uh, this is because there is the anointing required to back the prophetic. Or the word of the prophecy was released with an accompanying power. There's a secret there. When you prophesy without the backing of the power of God, of which I know many people do, because you'd be asking me, is it possible to prophesy without having the anointing? I'll say that's very much possible. Yeah, very much possible under certain conditions. So when you prophesy without the anointing serving as the guiding light or the fulcrum or the uh, foundation for the anointing that's with respect to uh, the basement of the anointing on the word sorry the prophecy on the word you will discover that the power that makes the prophecy come to pass will not be there there are folks that are fairly accurate with prophecy but these prophecies don't come to pass that is because an essential ingredient in the faculty of the prophetic is lacking in their prophecy, and that's the anointing. So you need the anointing in order to do excellently in the faculty of the prophetic. 
whether we are talking about prophetic accuracy, you need the anointing to be accurate with prophecy. Because when I have the Spirit of God upon me, like I'm drunk in the anointing before I engage a prophetic session, I go deep into depths. I'm referring to you here. You go deep into depths with ease. You are not like a non-conducting property in terms of electricity. Uh, you are now magnetic. That's like a piece of metal when you have the anointing before you enter into a prophetic session. But when you come in to engage the prophetic session without being a magnetic material in a magnetic field, there will be a limit to which the magnetic effect of the magnetic field can access and operate through you. That's the anointing of God here to say. So when you're positioned and uh, soaked with the anointing, it becomes better and easier for you to flow. I want to tell you some secrets about the anointing and how to uh, tell you some secrets about the anointing and tell you how to access this anointing. Recall that when God talked about the coming of John the Baptist through the mouth of the prophet Malachi, he talked about there shall go before him dust. Okay, I'll send to you Elijah the prophet. When it was time for John the baptizer to be born, Zechariah, his father, had a vision. And in the vision of the angel Gabriel, there was a detail given to him. There shall go before him the spirit of Elijah. In the spirit of Elijah. That, that's the man John or your son John is going to be operating in the spirit of Elijah. This is making a particular reference to the prophetic anointing. In other words, let's go back to Malachi again to pick the details about the coming of John, uh, uh, Elijah, which is John. He said that he shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children. So it's going to require the anointing for him to be able to execute or accomplish his prophetic mission. Now, he was going to come to turn the hearts of the fathers to their children. That would mean his prophecy. You get that? But it will require the anointing to serve all. Every word that comes out of the mouth of the prophet Elijah, Elijah uh, now in the vessel of John the Baptist, to be able to, you know, turn indeed the hearts of these uh, fathers to that of their children. So you see, we effect the message of the prophetic, of prophecy, via the anointing that backs the prophet. That was why God had to wait to build Moses to the point where he now learned to operate with the power of God in terms of the anointing. Having been with Jethro for over 40 years, then he released him to go back to Egypt to bring out the people of Israel. So prophecy in itself is not enough here. The men needed what will garnish or serve or serve as the foundation for the effect of the prophecy that the man was going to go with to Egypt. So when Moses came, he didn't come in words. The Bible talked about, like Apostle Paul said, we were not just about being mighty with words. Now, we were not just about coming to you with philosophies. No. We demonstrated power. Remember that Paul operated not just an as apostle, as opposed to a teaching apostle who was faith-based, but the man operated with real anointing. So the prophetic secret of Apostle Paul was, was in that his prophetic message or mission was garnished with the anointing. Now, it was time for the Lord Jesus Christ to be launched out. He had to be separated in the wilderness for 40 days and 40 nights. I've had folks who want to operate in the prophet, but they don't want to pay the price to go through what it takes to access the anointing that is required for this work. Yeah. Now, when Jesus was baptized, the spirit came upon him. That spirit drove him into the wilderness. That's another ball game altogether. Now, the spirit of God or the spirit of the anointing coming upon the prophet leads the prophet through paths in the realm of the spirit to accomplish uh, real feats in the physical realm. Get that? So, I just want to make you understand something. Prophets are actually commissioned to combat the kingdom of darkness. And the kingdom of darkness, no, no other language but power. Now, 
If the devil wants to interact with you or interrogate your anointing, your personality, he's going to be interrogating your anointing. Yeah. Now, if the devil wants to stop your place, a hold on your mission or destiny or career, he's going to be interacting with your anointing. This is what I mean. He is checking for where you've got loophole so that the power of God will not be backing you up. Even if you had known nothing about the power of God. Job serves you. Uh, does Job uh, serve you for nothing? Is he obedient or faithful for nothing? You get that. So the devil was actually looking for something around Job upon which to stand in order to touch Job. Now, he couldn't touch Job on the account that Job was intact with God. And this being intact with God made Job access the anointing. In that sense, he couldn't accept Job, access Job. But when God removed the anointing from Job, he was able to access Job. I don't mean Satan is afraid of the anointing. He is not. I only mean that the anointing is a defense, even at that, because God was in a meeting with his sons, and Satan came into that meeting. The anointing was there. The thing was that he came into the meeting, but he could not touch anybody in the meeting. So if I'm anointed as a prophet, he can come into that meeting, but he cannot touch you. But if somebody with me, let me say my spouse, even my children, surrogate or biological, uh, dirty by way of their interaction with the universe, Satan will gain access to them. But he will not gain access to me because I'm protected by the anointing. That doesn't mean that he would stay far because I'm anointed. He will still come around to pry, to see if there could be a chance for him to come in. You get that? So, for prophets who are going to be doing laudable exploits in these latter days, the place of the anointing cannot be undermined. When we talk about meditating and doing some kind of uh, work that makes you projected or projects you or place you as a prophetic mafia, let me talk about this. And um, here right now, and something is happening in this city, I just want to gain access to you in the realm of the spirit and then interact with the processes. Let me say principalities and powers uh, directly connected with, let me say, killings going on in the city or wrong policy that the government is making at the time. And uh, this is going to be affecting the lives of scores and scores of people. That's thousands of people or in their millions. This may affect their spiritual life as well or affect their physical life or well-being. It could be medically related uh, or health facility kind of uh, tampering with or hazard that's going to come into the town. And this is masterminded by a particular uh, principality or demon. I'm not a prophet in the land. I'm a prophet in the land. The first thing the, the devil is going to do is He's going to check out whether I'm prophetic enough in terms of the anointing, not in terms of my ability to see alone. Yeah. So, seers that see in the presence of territorial demons are those with the anointing that protects their seeing ability. Without the anointing that protects and secures your seeing ability, the first thing the devil will do is to switch off your seeing ability so that you will not be able to track the hazard or havoc is going to be causing in the town because he knows you are a gate man in the town. You are a watchman. As a prophetic folk, you're a watchman. So his first target is to ensure that you are in balance. And one way to make you in balance is to remove your seeing ability or hearing ability so that you are not able to interact with the spirit realm. That gives him an edge to be able to ask, uh, uh, to carry out his uh, mission on the land. So if I'm going to be serving as a true watchman, I have to be anointed enough and be above the territorial demon in court. That's why as people in our capacity, we operate as principalities of light. Nothing less than, less than that or short of that. You get that? Now, uh, there was an incident in Nigeria, somewhere in Lagos, and uh, uh, there was, it was a kind of an uproar. A protest from the youths uh, against the government, a particular system that was in place that the youths were not okay with. Uh, it was said that when the during the height of this protest from the youths, although it was a peaceful kind of protest, but for the other people who took advantage of the season to destroy or waste the lives of the youths, what they did was that they had to trip off or cut off the light in a particular section 
or region in Lagos so that their place was dark for them to kill, waste as many lives as possible. You get that? So when the devil wants to attack any place, any city where a prophet is occupying as a territory, the first thing it tries to do is to black out that place. I mean, to turn off the lights there. That's why a prophet that is serving as a security uh, gate man, watchman, must be anointed so that when the devil tries to come into the land, he will be sure he can't. There is a light source there, namely you. He cannot put off your light. This way, whatever is required to be accessed when all other prophets cannot see, you can see. See, let me take us back to the Bible. Let's go back to the scripture. You remember that there was an occasion where Ahab was supposed to die, and God had asked, How do I? Uh, motivate Ahab to go into the battle to be killed. Now, there was a total blackout. A spirit appeared before God in the presence of God and said, I'll go and do this mission. Whether that was the spirit of God or spirit of the darkness, who knows? But the fact remains that just as the devil came to take permission to deal with Job, that spirit certainly must have been from the darkness. You get that? So the spirit came down and put lies in the mouth of the prophet of Ahab. You get that? That was a total blackout. So the prophets around up, including the likes of Zechariah, I think that was the name, the likes of Zechariah, who was supposed to be the, a prophet of the light, could not see because he was not in that realm. But when Micaiah was consulted, he came before the, uh, the king up and he said, I saw the Lord sitting on his throne and he asked a question, who will go to motivate Ab to go and the battle to be killed there? And uh, one of the spirits said, I'm going to put a lying spirit in the mouth of his prophets and they'll motivate him to go to the battle uh, hoodwink, you know, hoodwinked, thinking that he's going to come back safely. So Ab, if you go to this battle, you're going to die. Now Ab decided to pay deaf ears, you know, to the prophecy of Micaiah saying that he should be kept in prison awaiting his return. The prophet was bold enough to say, that is if you return from this battle. Ab suddenly went to the battle, never came back alive. You get that? So he was the only man who had the required anointing to outdo the realm where that spirit that came to black out other prophets in the town, you know, were operating. So, prophets are in class. <laughs> and when, you know, principalities and powers are coming on the land, they know who is who. They know where to black out, where they cannot black out, no go areas. They already know. I trust that through this material, I'm going to be exposing you to the anointing that backs the prophetic so that you gain all that is required to stand your ground and take the city for God. Now, being a watchman for God and his people so that they are not taken by surprise on any occasion. I just want to make you understand that Jesus went out there to wait on God and in the process of time, filed himself with the anointing. Moses took out 40 years in our how do you call it, the uh, land of uh, Ethiopia here, with uh, Jethro uh, to be prepared. Daniel was prepared in Babylon, and uh, how do you call his name? Joseph was prepared in the prison there. Make sure you are prepared. And uh, beyond this, we tap the anointing like Elisha tapped from Elijah. And as I do this video and as you're watching right now, you are tapping the anointing to take on territories and rule over using the anointing to back the prophetic. And if you were not seeing well, I declare that impartation takes place so that with this encounter, you are going to take on that territory and no power comes in without your consent. God bless you. Father, we thank you for this moment we've had together on this platform. I declare, and de declare that another atmosphere be created over the life of your servant watching right now in Jesus' mighty name. God bless you. Don't forget, in case you're yet to subscribe to my channel, do so right now. And uh, God bless you as you do. Jesus' name. See you in my next video.